Mysterious, silent, chaotic, scary. The universe is vast. It's only bounded by our limitations. We humans have always been curious about the cosmos for a long time. From then on, we have made numerous tools to explore the universe. Telescope is one of them. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope was launched into the space on December 25, 2021. And in this video we are going to explore how it works. Let's divide the whole observatory into four parts. The telescope, the instrument module, the sun shield and the spacecraft bus. A satellite or spacecraft bus is the main body and structural component of a satellite. in which a payload and all scientific instruments are held the spacecraft bus provides the necessary support functions for the operation of web observatory six major subsystems are housed on the bus which include electrical power subsystem attitude control subsystem communication subsystem command and data handling subsystem propulsion subsystem thermal control subsystem The electrical power subsystem converts sunlight shining on the solar panels into the power needed to operate the other subsystems in the bus as well as the scientific instrument payloads. The attitude control subsystem senses the orientation of observatory, maintains the observatory in a stable orbit and provides the rough pointing of a observatory to the area of a sky that the scientific instruments want to observe. The communication subsystem is the ears and the mouth of the observatory. The system receives instructions from the operation control center and sends the status and scientific data to the same. The command and data handling system is the brain of a spacecraft bus. The system has computer and a command telemetry processor that takes the commands from the communication system and directs them to the appropriate recipient. The propulsion subsystem contains the fuel tanks and the rockets that are fired to maintain orbit when directed by the attitude control system. Wave has two types of rocket thrusters. One kind is called secondary combustion augmented thrusters and they are used for orbit correction. Wave has two pairs of them. They use hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide as a fuel and oxidizer respectively, which makes them bipropellant thrusters. The other kind of thrusters on the wave is called MRE1 or monopropellant rocket engine since it only uses hydrazine. There are 8 MRE1s on the wave and they are used for attitude control and momentum. The thermal control subsystem maintains the operating temperature of a spacecraft bus. Let's explore in detail how this system works. Being splendidly sensitive, infrared astronomical observatory, the James Webb Space Telescope's optics needs to be cooled to suppress the infrared background noise. Moreover, the detectors inside each scientific instrument that convert infrared light signals into electrical signals or the processing into images need to be cooled to work just right. Typically, the longer the wavelength of infrared light, the colder the detectors needs to be to do this conversion. while also limiting the generation of random noise electrons these instruments have detectors formulated with mercury cadmium telluride which work ideally for web at 37 kelvin we can get them this code in space passively simply by virtue of web's design which includes a tennis court size sun shield we will explore it in the next section of this video However, some instruments need to be at a temperature of less than 7 Kelvin to operate properly. This temperature is not possible on web by passive means alone. So, web carries a cryocooler. The web's cryocooler is basically a sophisticated refrigerator with its pieces distributed throughout the observatory. The primary piece is the cryocooler compressor assembly. It is a heat pump consisting of pre-cooler that generates about 1/4 watt of cooling power at about 14 kelvin and a high efficiency pump that circulates the refrigerant cooled by the conduction with the precooler as it's important to describe before it protects our telescope from the radiation emitted from the sun this sun shield will always be between the sun and the telescope 
This sunshield consists of five layers of a material called Kapton. Each layer is coated with aluminium, and the sun-facing side of the two hottest layer, mainly the layer one and two, also have doped silicon coating to reflect the sun's heat back into the space. The ISIM or Integrated Science Instrument Module is the heart of a James Webb Space Telescope. To simplify integration, engineers have divided the ISIM into three regions. The Region 1 component is the Cryogenic Instrument Module. This chills the detectors down to 39 Kelvin, a necessary first stage cooling effort so that the spacecraft's own heat doesn't interfere with the infrared light detected from the distant cosmic sources. The Region 2 component is the ISIM electronics compartment, which provides the mounting surfaces and the ambient thermally controlled environment for the instrument control electronics. The Region 3 component located within the spacecraft bus is the ISIM command and data handling subsystem with integral ISIM flight software and the MIRI cryocooler compressor and control electronics. Now let's dive into the most interesting and the fascinating part of the video. The main component of a telescope is the mirror. One of this telescope's goal is to look back through the time to when the galaxies were young. Webb will do this by observing galaxies that are very distant at over 13 billion light years away from us. To see such far off and faint objects, Webb needs a large mirror. The telescope sensitivity or how much detail it can see is directly related to the size of a mirror area that collects the light from the objects being observed. A larger area collects more light just like a larger bucket collects more water in a rain shower than a smaller one. Scientists and engineers of Webb telescope determined that a primary mirror which is 6.5 meters across was needed to measure the light from these distant galaxies. Building a mirror this large is challenging even for use on the ground. A mirror this large has never been launched into the space. If Hubble telescope's 2.4 meter mirror were scaled to be large enough for Webb, it would be too heavy to launch into the orbit. The Webb team had found new ways to build the mirror so that it would be light enough yet very strong. The Webb telescope team decided to make mirror segments from beryllium which is both strong and light. Each segment weighs approximately 20 kg. The hexagonal shape allows for a roughly circular segmented mirror with high filling factor and six-fold symmetry. A high fill factor means segment fit together without gap. If the segments were circular, there would be gaps between them. Finally, an overall mirror shape that is roughly circular is preferred because it focuses the light into most compact region on the detector. Once in space, Getting these mirrors to focus correctly on faraway galaxies is the another challenge. Actuators or tiny mechanical motors provide the answer to achieving a single perfect focus. A web telescope is known as 3-mirror anastigmat telescope. In this configuration, the primary mirror is concave, the secondary is convex, and it works slightly off-axis. The tertiary mirror removes resulting astigmatism and also flattens the focal plane which also allows for wider field of view.